One of the most difficult parts of being a coach is watching your hardworking students deal with losing debates. Many beginning coaches wonder how to help students deal with losing, and even how to manage their own feelings about competitive success. I lost every debate in my first tournament. All of them. All seven of my debates I lost. We had no idea what we were doing, but what we had was a very dedicated coach who, after every debate round, came in and immediately asked us, what did we learn about this particular debate? What did we figure out? Now, how are we going to use this for the next debate? And after that tournament, that same coach, Spaddy Maddox, when we got back to school, she read all of our ballots written out, and she typed up a list, wrote up a list, and said, here are the things that we need to work on that they said that we need to do. And it, losing kind of sucked, but it was much better that she was sort of vested in the process of us getting better, that we knew that that would be the worst of it because she was dedicated to us getting better. And actually a lot of it is not about what I say but about listening and just being there. Um, they, a lot of times I think the most important thing they need is for someone to, to recognize their feelings about what, what's happened to them. I try not to buy in or help them or excuse what they've done by blaming the judge or blaming their partner. Um, I really try to diffuse those kinds of impulses um, and help them focus on the only thing that you can really change is what you're doing yourself. So listen and um, be encouraging and try to keep them from falling into those traps. A win means that the judge understood your arguments and thought they were important and decided you made the better arguments in the debate. And sometimes you may have a great idea that isn't explained clearly. Sometimes you may not understand what the opponent said as well as the judge did. You know what I mean? Uh, there are all kinds of reasons. But if you keep getting better, then, then wins will come. And what's great is that they come and they're, I mean, they're, they're not winning. And, and they still come back time and after And what time. keeps them coming? I mean, I have to think that the community that we create, um, the commitment and compassion and the dedication of us, you know, being there, being that consistency for the students who may not have that consistency at their home. And we're always here and we're always saying, we're pro I'm always saying, I'm so proud of you, you did it, you know, that's great. And it transfers into their experiences at school too because when things are going wrong or they need somebody to talk to, they come to me because they know that I'm this constant in their life, whether it be in the school day or in the debate, you know, I'm here and I'm here for them as an adult to support them and, you know, help them achieve. And one of the things that I think is most valuable about the activity is that um, it forces you to come to terms with losing. And as long as students can accept their losses and um, learn from them. I, I can't think of a more important life skill than learning how to learn from failures and then also learn how to emotionally pick yourself up very quickly and walk back into another round and keep going at it. And so being the person who's there when they inevitably lose their first round um, and helping them learn whatever tools or access whatever um, skills they have themselves to be able to, to face that. I think that's maybe the most important part of my job. Part of what we're teaching students is how to deal with life. And in life, there are, there's lots of failure. In fact, we don't grow without failure. And we shouldn't protect students from losing what we should do is teach them how to lose and how to win graciously, but how to learn from both and become better citizens.